Perform this at your own risk. You should only attempt this modification if you are comfortable with soldering and working with electronics. You don't need to be a pro, but you should have some experience. At a minimum, practice on something else first to be sure you are confident you can do this. Oh yeah, this will void your warranty. Alright, so this is a second video in a series that I'm doing on uh, performing some audio modifications to the Tyrannus Revision A uh, audio board. I'm going to assume at this point that you've already seen the first video, which was I call the Reflex 1 method to reduce audio buzz. Um, and I did that mod and did a video on how to do that. That included how to get at the transmitter uh, guts, uh, what part of the, uh, of the area we're working on, and then I performed that mod and did some audio testing. So if you haven't seen that, go back and look at that video, and we're going to pick up from there. With that mod already in place, the next mod I'm going to add is what I'll call the P. McKenzie no-click mod, and that basically will reduce the... Uh, clicking sound or popping sound whenever you change the volume levels with the Tyrannus. So that's the scope of this video. Uh, I'm going to skip through all the, uh, like I said, how to get to the guts and where we're working on. You can go look at the other video for that. Uh, this video is going to focus on adding a, uh, a 1 microfarad capacitor and a 5.6K uh, resistor to the audio circuit. So let's get started. So this particular mod comes to us from Pat McKenzie. And again, this was another post on the uh, Tyrannus Hardware Hacks thread at RC Groups. And in this uh, post, he shows us how he used a uh, 1 microfarad capacitor and a 5.6K resistor to reduce these uh, audio clicking sounds when you change volume. So I followed his instructions, and uh, now I've done a video to show you how to do it and what the result was. So here's what my Tyrannus looks like right now with my current uh, mod, the Reflex 1 mod. We're going to be playing right next to that, here where it says PCM Audio. Uh, there's a uh, resistor R12 right there, and then the PCM Audio uh, pad that we're going to be dealing with. And we're going to actually be cutting the trace between the via and the pad, and then putting the resistor and capacitor in between those. So let's take a look at the parts we're going to be uh, adding to our Tyrannus audio board. First, this is the one microfarad capacitor. It is a polarized capacitor in the fact that there's a positive and a negative side. We're going to put the negative side against the resistor and the positive side direct to the pad. And then here's the resistor, a 5.6K resistor. And uh, like I said, it's going to attach to the negative side of the capacitor and will also uh, be... Uh, into that via on the board. How you connect these two is really up to you. Uh, again, just put the negative side of the uh, cap with the resistor and you'll be fine. Uh, I originally did uh, kind of sort of how uh, Pat McKenzie did his originally, just kind of twisting these arms together. Um, and it worked okay, but I, I didn't really like it when I was going to install it. So I changed it up and used a little bit more of a compact method for connecting the two uh, with a very short lead between how you do it's really up to you. Just make sure that your leads don't contact anything that you're not expecting them to. All right, so onto the board. The first thing we need to do is cut that trace between the via and the pad. And I used a fresh, uh, sharp X-Acto knife blade and uh, just kind of removed, uh, as you can see, that top trace, uh, cutting and, uh, you know, hacking away at it. And it's really small, hard to see. Um, so, uh, you know, just you basically want to get that so that there's no connectivity between those uh, two areas, the via and the pad. And I used a multimeter to check for continuity once I was pretty sure I was done. And uh, I'm not getting any response there, uh, so I'm pretty sure I've got it all. So the next thing I'm going to do is clean up the board a little bit and get ready to solder. So you, you really want to make sure you get all those little specks of trace off the board and out of the radio. You don't want those floating around. And then I use the 99% isopropyl alcohol to get everything cleaned up. Next, I used my flux pen to add a little flux put to both the trace and the pad. Then I added some solder to both of those areas. I'm using a 60-40 solder. It's pretty much just what I have laying around. I did pretend the ends on my uh, leads here, and then I'm just soldering them into those uh, two new pads that I made. That should do it. Everything feels nice and solid. And then I just bent the entire assembly up to uh, stand it up a little bit. 
And lastly, I used a Q-tip with some more of that alcohol on it to uh, clean up any excess flux I have. And that's about it. I'm done. So here's the final assembly. I've got the Reflex 1 cap and now the Pat McKenzie uh, no-click mod. All right, so let's take a look at the audio testing. For testing of the no-click mod, I used both uh, testing with recording the audio with no uh, Tyrannus audio playing, just adjusting the volume using my uh, S2 pot. And I also wanted to generate some tests with audio playing. For that, I'm using a 440 hertz test tone. It's essentially an A note on the musical scale. Uh, and so I figured that would give me a good constant to check against. So first, this is a result of the testing from both the before and after the mod. No audio playing, just adjusting the volume on the Tyrannus. So as you can see, it's a remarkable improvement. I uh, apologize for the background noise. Again, I'm doing this with a handheld recorder up against the speaker of the Tyrannus. Um, but that's pretty darn impressive. Now, the next thing is the recording with the uh, 440 hertz tone playing. And the results are a little bit different. You can hear a little bit of volume click at the very low levels of the audio adjustment. Uh, but at the upper volume limits, I would say more than 50% volume levels, uh, it's non-existent at all and uh, very subtle in the lower levels. So I know it can be confusing because on the after mod you hear the steps uh, change, but that's literally stepping of the volume level, not uh, popping or clicking, uh, as you can clearly hear in the before mod. So again, uh, very, very solid improvement. So the last thing I want to look at is the relative volume change with the mod. Uh, it's my understanding that because of the added resistance, and especially because we didn't move the R12 resistor, uh, we might have a decrease in overall volume. So this is just a, a dB waveform with the 440 hertz tone playing both before and after mod, just to show the relative difference in volume. And it's really negligible in my opinion. And uh, given the fact that I'm doing this manually with a handheld recorder, uh, some of the margin of error could be on my part as well. But it does look like it's a little bit lower uh, at the onset, but then everything seems to level out. So again, not something I'm actually worried about. So there you have it, the P. McKenzie volume click mod, and uh, seems to work great. I'm very happy, and uh, hope this was helpful for you. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.